Now, before anyone says anything, this is not, nor will it ever be, a Miraculous channel. However, this needs to be said. Miraculous Ladybug ripped off Shigokara. Hello everyone, my name's Ayla Bell, and I am actually using a script for once. This is only because I have a point to make and I don't want to drag things out by accidentally repeating myself. Plus, I don't know, if this script thing is easy enough to do and seems to make life easier, then maybe I'll take the time out to actually making one for most of my videos. We'll see. But I digress. So, that's a pretty big accusation I made, huh? Kind of bold, too. Not that I'm expecting much of anyone to see this video, but it's something that's been bothering me for a while now. And since Miraculous is in its fourth season and still on people's minds, and it doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon, seriously, they planned up to like seven seasons, how the heck can they drag out this plot? Why are they dragging out this plot? It's not even that it's lasting long, it's that it has no substance and it's just repetitive and frustrating. Anyway, before I get into all of that, let me give a quick summary of the two IPs in mind. If you want to skip the summaries because you're already familiar with their stories, then you can skip to this timestamp. And if you want to skip the Shigokara summary, my Miraculous Rundown starts here. And if you want to skip all the way to the top 15 list, then you can skip here. But for the rest of you who want to listen to my lovely voice, ramble on and on, then enjoy. Let's start with Shigokara. Shigokara, or My Guardian Characters, is a 12-volume manga by duo authors Peach Pit that ran from the end of 2005 to mid-2010 and was later adapted into an anime that ran from 2007 to 2010. Shigokara follows an elementary school girl named Amu Hinamori, who, on the outside, seems very cool, calm, and a bit spicy. However, this is all a font to compensate for the fact that she is quite shy and insecure and has trouble expressing her true self, her would-be self, if you will. Not completely sure of who her would-be self is, she wishes with the deepest desire to make that known. This desire manifests as three eggs, one pink, one blue, and one green, that all hatch to reveal Ron, Miki, and Sue, three small and cute fairy-like creatures called Shugokara, again, otherwise known as guardian characters. Now, my memory of the specific details of the story are a bit rusty because it's been probably over a decade since I last saw this show, but I believe that in this universe, if a child has a strong enough desire to be a certain thing, then that desire will manifest as an egg that will hatch a Shugokara. Only people who have Shugokaras can see other Shugokaras, I believe. And while not everyone has a Shugokara, mostly everyone has a heart's egg. In fact, and I did have to look this up because I didn't remember the exact quote, the quote they say at the beginning of every episode, all kids hold an egg in their souls, the egg of our hearts are would-be selves, yet unseen. The general point of Shigokaras is to help their host, originator, parent, ward? What, what exactly is the Shigokaras relationship to their respective child? Whatever. The point of these creatures is to help their person to discover who they truly are and help them fulfill their dreams. So, in the middle of all this self-discovery and finding out that tiny fairy things actually exist, is a bigger plot in which an organization called the Easter Company is trying to find the embryo, which is a special heart's egg that grants any wish. And in order to find the embryo, they need to go through quite a few people because they don't know exactly who has the embryo. But extracting and forcing people's hearts eggs out of their bodies causes X eggs and then X characters to hatch which are corrupted dreams manifested. It's up to Amu and her new friends who also have Shugokara to use their guardian character special abilities which allows them to transform and use unique powers to purify their corrupted dreams and return the eggs to their owners. I didn't intend for the recap of Shugokara to be that extensive. Oops. <laughs> My bad. Again. And now for Miraculous. Miraculous, Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir, is a French CGI cartoon created by Thomas Astruc in 2015, and it's still releasing new episodes today. And again, will be for a while. Why? 
Miraculous follows Marinette Dupan Chang and Adrian Agrest, two middle schoolers who have secret lives as a superhero duo, Ladybug and Cat Noir. Neither of them knows each other's secret identity, and both try desperately to keep their identities a secret for the safety of themselves and their loved ones. Now, there are these mysterious items called the Miraculous, each item looking like mundane pieces of jewelry or clothing of some sort, but in actuality, they hold unique abilities. These Miraculous are also bound to floating creatures called Kwamis, who look like cute miniature floating animals. Except for Tiki, who looks nothing like a ladybug except for her color scheme. She's still cute though. <laughs> Through some kind of magical shenanigans, the Kwamis became bound to these items, and whenever someone wears their respective item, and I guess says an activation phrase, the user is able to transform into a superhero with that Kwamis special ability. Ladybug and Cat Noir's biggest threat is a villain named Hawk Moth, who, by using his own Miraculous, takes advantage of people's negative emotions and corrupts people, turning them into basically superpowered supervillain versions of themselves. It's up to the duo, and sometimes some other friends, to stop these villains from destroying Paris and return them back to normal. And from what I understand, Hawk Moth is doing all of this in order to get hold of Marinette and Adrian's Miraculous, because it is said that wielding the both of them will allow the user to make any wish they want. Are you seeing some similarities here yet? Now I want to add a disclaimer here. I have never watched an episode of Miraculous. I'm not a fan of the show, but I do really like the concept. And because of Instagram, I know most of the characters and most of what's been happening in the story thus far. And if anyone cares, my favorite character is Chloe because I adore her potential since my favorite trope is reformed villains. She hasn't reformed yet, but I'm hoping she will. Yeah, I already know what the creator thinks of her, and I'm really hoping he's just trolling everyone and is actually planning a glorious redemption. But if not, fanfiction exists. If you want a separate video about me talking about my love for reformed villains, let me know. Anywho, I read miraculous fan comics and genuinely enjoy them, and from what I hear, reading fanfiction is better than the actual show anyway. And as far as Miraculous proper goes, I don't like the animation style and I wish they kept it looking like an anime as was originally intended. Actually, I like the initial concept of the story a lot more than what we've got, but whatever. If you like it, then that's cool. It's very popular and it's okay. <laughs> we, it's okay if we don't like the same things, it's fine. But in my opinion, some of the writing in the show is too on the nose and cringy. Again, from what I heard, I think at least three or four characters have said that Marinette and Adrian were meant for each other. Saying that kind of thing out loud is too on the nose. We already know they're going to end up together. You don't need to keep telling us. It's really annoying. Anyway, the love square between Marinette and Adrian and their secret identities is also frustrating, which is one of the bigger reasons why I don't want to watch the show, because again, we're in the middle of season four. And these two people have not figured it out yet. And don't give me the whole, when they're transformed, they don't recognize each other because of magic. Fine, I would believe that if, and again, I do, remember I know things because of Instagram. I know there's one episode where they had to detransform near each other because of reasons, because the bad guy was doing something, I don't know. They had to detransform and after they are back in their civilian forms, they're talking to each other. How do they not recognize each other's voices? They're friends who go to the same school, who are in the same class, and again, they are friends. So assuming that the Miraculous does disguise them, then when they're back to the civilian forms, they should be able to recognize their voices, but they don't because it's bad writing. <laughs> anyway, it's been a full it's been three full seasons and we're in the middle of the fourth and they still haven't revealed each other yet most other magical girl shows would have had a reveal long ago usually somewhere in the first season usually i don't know i just think the longer they wait for the reveal the more disappointing it'll be because they've hyped it up for so many years and have teased the audience with fake reveals more times than what should be considered okay but again i digress from what I've seen of Miraculous, I couldn't help but notice how similar it was to Shigokara. 
It was even more surprising that I hadn't heard anyone say anything about that or even realize it for that matter. The funny thing is that Wikipedia says how Miraculous is mostly inspired by Sailor Moon and various other magical girl stories, and I do see some of that, especially how it says that Miraculous is inspired by the Sailor Saturn arc, and again, I see that, but it has way too many things in common with Shugo Kara for it to be a coincidence. Like, it's not blatant plagiarism, but they're, they are so suspiciously similar. So, without further ado, here are the top 15 ways that Miraculous ripped off Shugo Kara. By the way, probable spoilers for both Miraculous and Shugo Kara. Number 1. Both are magical girl shows. This isn't where the ripping off part comes from, but it's important to note. Number 2. Both main characters, Amu and Marinette, initially have a hard time being themselves around their crush, Tadase and Adrian respectively. Number 3. Both main characters' initial love interest is a nice blonde boy. Number four, her secondary crush is an older boy who has dark hair and plays a stringed instrument. Number five, one of the main characters' love interests have a blonde girl who shares a brother or sister like relationship with them or grew up with them, you know, and often tries to vie for her brother slash best friend's attention. This blonde girl has attempted to or has succeeded in kissing this boy. This blonde girl initially does not like the main character. Number six, the main character's alter ego allows her to be more confident in herself. Number seven, the main character's initial love interest is also initially only in love with the superhero alter ego and not her civilian form. Number eight, both stories have a sad cat boy who craves freedom. This sad cat boy is ultimately the one the main character will end up with romantically. Side note, if you want the full Shigo Kara story, read the manga. The anime is one of those situations where it was being produced while the manga was still being made, so they had to make up an ending. The anime is fun, and I really, really like it, but for the real ending, at least check out the manga for the last story arc. Anyway, number 9. Both stories have tiny, cute, floating creatures who tag along with the main characters. These tiny creatures fuse with or lend their abilities to the wielders. Number 10. Both boys and girls transform in these shows, and more often than not, the ones transforming are classmates or go to school with the main character. Number 11. Given the right circumstances, characters can swap their magical floating creatures and powers with other characters, giving them new but temporary transformations. Number 12. The bad guys in both stories want a magical item that can grant them a wish. Number 13, a small purple evil thing corrupts people and turns them into corrupted versions of themselves. The good guys change them back. Number 14, Amu's main three aspirations are all manifest in Marinette in some way. Amulet Heart is spunky and athletic. These are traits mainly seen in Ladybug. Amulet Spade is an artist. Marinette can draw and is a fashion designer. And Amulet Clover is a baker. I believe Marinette can bake. Or she just works at her family's bakery. Again, haven't watched the show, so I don't know that specific detail. It's one or both of those. And the 15th way that Miraculous ripped off Shugo Kara is the name Tiki. It rhymes with Miki. I rest my case. Now, of course, there are differences between the stories. The specific magical MacGuffins are different, as well as some motivations. Characters are older, generally, in Miraculous. In Shugo Kara, the characters, most of them are in elementary school, going on middle school, the oldest being Ikuto, who's in, who's in high school. And in Shugo Kara, there aren't really any secret identities. Everyone who can transform knows each other, and everyone who can transform can participate in conflicts whenever they want, whereas in Miraculous, only Marinette and Master Fu get to know people's identities. Except Mari can't know who Adrian is, since that would be fair and would get rid of so many conflicts, and we can't have that, can we? And Marinette gets to be in charge of who gets to fight and when. But you see where I'm coming from, right? I'm not crazy, right? Miraculous is just Shugo Kara, but in a different font. Despite its flaws and minor problematic implications, Shugo Kara is one of my favorite anime and I've seen over 140 anime, so I'm not some newbie who knows nothing about the medium. And it's a little frustrating that it's not being credited at all, at least as an influence for Miraculous, when it clearly was. When five or more things are in common, I don't know, to me that just seems 
to be way more than just a coincidence. I don't know, once again, maybe I'm crazy. I know I'm just some nobody on YouTube, but I felt all of this needed to be said. I know it's not going to change anything as Miraculous is still going strong, but when I get a chance to spread some Shugo Kara love, I will. And that's all there is. There isn't any more. Hey guys, sorry that it's been like a week or two past when I would like to upload things, but I got a lot of things going on in life. I have a full-time job as well as like an Instagram to keep up and a story to write. I've got a lot of things. And I know it doesn't sound like that much from that description, but trust me, it's a lot of things and I'm tired a lot, but I am trying hard here. <laughs> it is only by the grace of God that I have any kind of motivation or energy to do anything. But this is something I really want to talk about for a while. And again, it's baffling how no one else has noticed this. Maybe they have, and I just haven't looked anywhere because again, I don't watch Miraculous and I'm not exactly part of the fandom. I just like it from afar. It's like someone who, it's like, I don't, hmm, what's a good analogy for this? It's like, uh, you don't like the Grand Canyon, like you don't want to go, but you are okay with seeing pictures of it on the computer. You have no desire to actually go there, but just looking at it from far away or looking at it in a digital format is good enough for you. That's basically how it is for me in Miraculous. I am still going to keep up with the show via Instagram because I am minorly interested, but not just not interested enough to watch it. Also, I didn't include this in my opinion part of my, my Miraculous rundown, but the English voices kind of bother me a little bit. I usually go for the English dub on most things that I watch because I like to watch things in the language that I speak, but... Miraculous is dub. Okay, technically, 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 there is nothing wrong with it. But since I had ingested so much miraculous content via comics and stuff and pictures, I went for a very long time without hearing anybody's voice, French, English, or anything else. So when I finally heard the English voices, I was disappointed because they did not match the voices I had in my head. Like, I really like Christina V. I think she's awesome and. I listened to some of her music before I even knew she was a voice actress, but in my head, she does not fit Marinette's face. She's doing too high pitch of a performance, and I feel like Marinette's voice should not be that high. I don't know, that just could be me. And also having Bryce, I don't know his last name, guy who plays Aaron in Attack on Titan, and Kirito in SAO, and... Rin in Blue Exorcist, hearing that voice for Adrian also kind of throws me off, so. But you could just watch the French version with the subtitles, Allo. Yes, I know, but I, again, I am not a fan of Miraculous. I not, do not intend on watching it. I'm just gonna, going to look at it from far away <laughs> with my telescope and just keep an eye on it. But anyway, I'm, I think I've rambled on long enough. If you want to see more of my content, I like to make story time videos and apparently opinionated videos on certain fandoms and other things that I have opinions on, because I do have opinions on things that bother me. Then click that like button, but subscribe first because that actually matters a little bit more. And share this video, do all that fun stuff, ring the notification bell. I really appreciate it. And Tell me in the comments, have you ever seen Shugo Kara? If not, do that. <laughs> Shugo Kara is fun. And again, it does have some minor problematic implications, but if you watch enough anime, I don't think you're going to be bothered by it. I think you're only going to be bothered by it if you don't. Like, anime just kind of does its own thing. It's clearly not rooted in reality, so some things just don't bother you as much when you watch enough of it. I'm not going to say what the problematic thing was because I really didn't think about it until someone pointed it out, so I'm just not going to say what the thing is. Shugo Kara is cool. I like the concept, and when I was younger, I really, um, what's the word? I really identified with Amu. Her and I had really similar 
um, I don't want to say issue, but her whole not being able to be herself around people thing and, and being like tough on the outside when she was like an insecure shy thing on the inside was totally me. So I really like Amu. Anyway, again, if you like my content, like, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and I will see you in the next video. God bless and shine on.